We're gonna talk about nerfs. Not the guns you used to play with as a kid, or in my case, still, but the technology that has the possibility to replace photogrammetry and photo scanning in the assets. Basically, it stands for Neural Radiance Fields, and it brings something to the table that photogrammetry can't do. It captures the reflections within the moment and basically allows you to put in a couple of photos or a video and while training this field basically as an AI um, then you get to have a 3D environment with changing reflections so I'm gonna try an example of that with I don't know why I've done it with something really appropriate not appropriate it's a piece of candle that I own in the house I love it it reminded me of a sculpture Hopefully it is not not safe for work, so we'll see. And then we'll bring that into the Unreal. Okay, so we're downloading the Luma AI app on our phone and we're gonna walk around our object for a few seconds. We're gonna choose the guided setup. I'm just going to the other side of it, like a sort of a 180 so it can draw the boundary box in front of it. And then we can crop it because I don't wanna deal with other objects. And you can edit this boundary box, but for this purposes, it's fine. We're going to confirm. And then you're going to go ahead, just like any other photo scanning, you're going to follow the guides and get photos and hit all of those markers. So what is the Luma plugin? Let's check out what it can do with an Unreal Engine. It basically drives from science and something that NVIDIA has also been working on. You're able to take photos, much like photo scanning from different angles around an object. And the difference is you get reflections and light that changes according to where you are with the camera inside the scene. So that is something that we weren't able to do with photo scanning because it is basically essentially a baked texture. That is the great thing that nerfs bring to the table. And although it is maybe not production ready to be started using by, you know, big, big companies, it is still something to look at. And as this technology grows, I think it's really useful for us as the visual effects people to learn about it, even to use it for our in the projects. So Luma is not the only way to use Nerfs, but this is an iOS app. I'm not sure if it is on Samsung yet. It is cheap. It's free right now and it's in beta. So something I thought I would try. You just download the Luma AI app on your phone. And after you do that, we're going to take a look at how I circled around an object, a questionable object. Uh, of my choosing and basically I process that by going into Luma AI's own website and once you log in with the same login on your phone app at the captures.lumalabs.ai slash me um, you will see the capture that I've made here Although this looks like a video right now, it is not a video. This is basically a combination of maybe 20, 30 different photos that I've picked and chose and did a photo scan around. But look, even though it's not perfect, how it's uh, picking up different reflections and lighting that's affecting something that has this much translucency on its skin as the candle. Which is why I wanted to try this and I apologize if this is not, you know, super on the nose, but it does give you an idea how it deals with harder objects. Like as you can see, the book that is something not as reflective is doing a really amazing job. So you can look at it in 3D because we selected and cropped it. It did a pretty amazing job on the object that I wanted to do and look at the reflections look how they're changing as we move and change our perspective and this is basically the panoramic version you can move around it and the cool part is you can use this whole scene and add your visual effects onto this but 
you can, if you're like me, basically download their plugin and figure out how to turn this into a blueprint and you can then bring it into your own scene and see if it works with rendering because this is still beta. And what they did is basically in their website, in the documents, they give you the Unreal Engine plugin as a starter project. I downloaded the cinematic usage one and you do need Unreal Engine 5.1 for this. I've tried it with other versions, does not work. It requires specifically 5.1. Once you download that, you will get something like this. Let's see. This is where I downloaded it. It's going to be a zip file. You're going to unzip that and you're going to get a Luma AI film starter. Once you open that project, it's going to come in empty. It won't be like this. It will just say basically content main. That's it. What then you need to do next is you can find this instructions on their website too but I will make it easier for you. And then it does say the current limitations. So I do suggest you read it um, because it does help with, with some rendering settings and stuff and what might be useful. The cool part about this starter project is that they already dialed in these settings. So if you're gonna bring in to another project in Unreal or a different version, which is what I'm gonna try next, is that you can at least have an example um, project to look at the settings, rendering settings and what works best with it. And at least then you can bake it, bake it into your 3D object, the texture, and then bring it that way. But we don't want that. We want it to be dynamically lit. All right. So once you done your scan, like we see in our video, then you're going to get something like this and you're just going to go ahead and hit download. You can, as you can see, download these different ones, the scene, the OBJ, but what you want to do, don't click on this if you already downloaded the uh, project file. This is just taking you back to the same page, this one. So go ahead and click on the Luma field file. And once you do that, you're going to receive something like this. Crazy and the extraction is going to be dot luma. All you got to do if you downloaded the project and opened it on 5.1, um, you're not going to have this. You're just going to have the main, which explains to you what it does. And then you're going to go ahead and drag this luma file directly into your content folder. And then immediately it will start filling up with all of these blueprints. So they talk about what the different ones mean. Uh, Dynamic basically is the blueprints react to shadows and lighting inside of Unreal Engine. And the baked ones is what you would expect from more of a traditional photo scan. Um, so let's see the difference. As you can see, this is reacting to my light better and this is going to look different um, because it does have the bake shadows and bake reflections onto the texture, which could still be useful if you are able to shoot it in a much more professional lighting environment that it is a diffused light and not many highlights. Great. Um, if you're just working with something like I am, uh, trying it at home with whatever daylight you have, then I would suggest try the dynamic one. And so as you can see, we can change the light here at source and play around with it a little bit. See how this is reacting to what's happening as opposed to this one. And when you do this, when you get a baked one, obviously you're going to want to then go into the textures of your object and not inside here because it's a little bit crazy. Let me show you what it looks like to go inside of one of those. Actually, I have untangled this one so I can show you. This looks somewhat normal. It was all tangled onto one space. 
and then when I clicked on this to see what this end base segmented material does, I couldn't even get to the end of it. I still have to untangle. I'm not about to figure that out right now, but it seems like it is getting world position data and dividing those vectors so that it treats the light and normals in that way, I think. Um, I'm not gonna save it. Maybe I messed up something. But again, if, if you're a little bit more seasoned, then you can go ahead and just figure out the textures within it and make sure that it does get affected by the lighting that is inside of Unreal Engine. It reacts to it. Otherwise, make sure you're shooting in an environment that has a similar lighting with your Unreal Engine scene. So I don't know if this is something that we're gonna use on our series, which is Castle, but this is pretty great. We can then try to um, upload this, basically import it into a different project and see what it does.